Welcome to this lecture on hypersensitive immune responses. These are a set of conditions where essentially your immune system overreacts to a particular stimulus and this can lead to significant inflammation, cellular damage and possibly leading to even death. So as you can see on the board we've got a table. Now the types of hypersensitive disorders are broken into four types. One, two, three, four. So sometimes these are called type one, two, three, four. Now what we'll go through today is firstly the antigen. So this is the stimulating factor that causes the response to begin with. We look at what part of your immune system is the main player to cause its reaction. But we look at a, a basic mechanism for each type, give a couple of disease examples, that you should know for each type. And then finally, we have a really good mnemonic, which gives you a better way to memorize or remember these particular types. So let's start with type one. This one is also known sometimes as IgE mediated. And so what's that, what that means is IgE in this case is an antibody. Antibodies are these proteins that are produced by B cells. And there are a number of different types in this in this case, it's a type E type. Now, what happens in this case is we've got an antigen and the antigen in type one is freely moving. So it comes from the outside world into your body. So it's freely floating around. So we'll just call it freely moving. Now, some examples of, of the antigen that we could think about is like pollen, or we could think bee venom, or maybe a protein in peanuts. Now, the immune component, as we said, is an antibody called IgE. So that's pretty easy to remember in, so far. Now, the mechanism, the big player is the mast cell with IgE. So what has to happen is the pollen, or we use pollen as an example, but that is the antigen, comes into the body. Okay, so the pollen comes in, let's say you sniff it in. Okay, it will get picked up by a B cell. Okay. The B cell will essentially react to it and then what it will do is it will release a whole lot of antibodies. And so the first exposure, this is what we call the priming or the sensitization, is causing uh, all these Ig antibodies which is related to the particular antigen, in this case it's the pollen, and these will start to be released. Now in this particular case they, they will stick to the mast cell. So the mast cells now have this particular antibody, IgE antibody, attached to it. Okay, so it's got it all over it. Now these mast cells can sit in strategic locations like in your skin, in your mucous membrane, in your airways, or sometimes in blood vessels. So now they're primed, now they're sensitized. Now the second exposure comes in, so now the pollen comes back, and the pollen in this case will bind to these antibodies on the mast cell. So if that's in your respiratory tract, the mast cell will then just spew out, release all of its internal contents, in this case histamine, which will spread everywhere in that location. This is going to cause inflammation, so it's going to cause vasodilation and it's going to cause increased permeability. So that area will become swollen and think about if you have hay fever, it's going to cause your eyes to run, your nose or your eyes to become watery, your nose to run, airways become harder to breathe. And so this is essentially a, um, a type 1 reaction. Now some examples of diseases, these are all centered around something called atopy, which is a type of kind of allergic response. And this could be allergic asthma, okay, or even anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. And so that's a really exaggerated response. And so what could happen there is in your blood vessels, they all become really dilated or your blood volume or your blood pressure will drop quite significantly. Your airway will close in and this can actually lead to death if it's not rectified. And so this is essentially a type 1 reaction. It's all centered around IgA, IgE, the mast cells. Okay. And because we've got a lot of A's here, atopy, asthma, allergies, anaphylaxis, so we're going to, the mnemonic is going to be A. Okay, so that's type 1. Type 2, uh, this, this type is called cytotoxic. Okay, so you could probably guess by that name, the cell will die in this case. 
Now, when you compare it to type 1, where we had a freely moving antigen, in this case, the antigen is fixed. So it is fixed on the cell. Whereas the immune comp component in type 1 was IgE, and that was, that was the, um, the fixed part, but in this type it's freely moving. So the antibody is freely moving. Now it's not a type E in this case, it's a, a type IgG or IgM. And so they're the antibodies used in this case. Now, an example. So when we look at our red blood cells, we have types associated with it. And so if you are a type A, that means you have antigens on your red blood cells that are A type. And that would mean that you have antibodies against the B. So if you were given a B type of blood, you would have antibodies against it which would react to it. And so if you think about it, let's assume that you are type A. So this is a type A blood type. So I'll, I'll put A there. Okay. So the antigen, okay, if you're a type A, is here, type A like so. That means you've got... You've got antibodies, so these are the, these Y-shaped things, that would be against B. So that would be in your blood normally. Now, if you gave a, a person that's a type A blood, and you gave them type B, so there's now a mismatch, these B antibodies would lock onto it, okay? So that would bind to it, like so. Like that and that would cause a complement response and so the other part of the immune component is complement. Now once you have this reaction it's going to cause a lead to death of that particular complex so this cell would be killed off. So if you were a type A blood and you were given a type B blood this reaction would occur and all those type B blood cells would get killed off and they would not exist anymore and that reaction would be quite significant and the, and the patient would present with uh, certain inflammatory responses. This could be also in the newborn so with the Reese factor incompatibility so if the mother's got a, a type of Reese which is different to the baby this could be a reaction there which could cause a hemolytic anemia in the newborn. Another example so I should write that there transfusion incompatibility. Now another type is what we call good pasture syndrome. So good pasture, good pasture syndrome. Now what happens in here, the cell in this case is in your kidney and it's got an antigen on it which is essentially going to be um, I think a type of collagen and that collagen is the antigen. The antibody which is either IgG or IgM reacts to that, causes a complement response which then kills off those particular cells in your glomerulus and that causes a type of nephritis which is problematic in this case. Now in terms of the mnemonic because we got cytotoxic, it's a cytotoxic response and because we use complement we'll use the letter C. Okay, so that's the second type. Moving on to the third type. This is an immune complex, complex type or response. So basically what is going to happen here is the antigen is now fr freely moving. Freely moving. So it's moving around the body. The antibody is freely moving. Freely moving. Okay, and so it together it forms an immune complex. Now, where could where could the antigen come from? So an example could be from a bacteria. So if you have a bacterial infection such as Streptococcus, this particular infection could be killed off by you, your immune system, but the a certain antigen from it can be moving through your bloodstream, which will meet up with uh, uh, an antibody and. In most commonly in type 3 is also another IgG and these together meet up. So what we can see is there's your antigen, say let's from the bacteria, it meets up 
and gets bound to with the antibody, these Ys. And together now, this group is a complex, and now it's moving through your blood. And so, once it's moving, it's not so much an issue, but if it binds to certain tissue, so if it goes into your kidney or gets stuck into your blood vessel, there's certain cells around there, like in your blood vessel, like a, a basophil, or in your kidneys, like a neutrophil, can re release certain cytotoxic or cytokines, which can cause inflammation in that area. So you, this complex could go to your kidneys and could lead to a type of glomerulonephritis, or it could go into your blood vessels and cause a kind of vasculitis. And so some examples would be post-strep glomerulonephritis, nephritis, or SLE, which is a type of lupus. And so in this, in this case, the antigen is like a DNA, DNA or RNA. Your antibody reacts to it, causes a complex, and that can go into certain parts of the body, like in the... Uh, in the blood vessels and called that vasculitis. Um, now, because this particular one is an immune complex, okay, immune complex driven, we're going to call it an I. Okay. Now, finally, we move to type four example, or another name for this is delayed. Okay, so this is a delayed type. The antigen is generally going to be movable, so it's freely moving. And so, similar to type 1, it can come into the body. Now, in terms of the immune component here, there's no antibodies driven in this type. This is more a lymphocyte. Okay, so particularly a T helper cell. Okay, that's the big player in this. So, if you are exposed to a certain antigen, okay, let's say like latex. So, let's say... You get this from gloves, and that antigen comes into the body. This will be taken up by a macrophage. So the macrophage will swallow it up, okay? Then what it will do is it will present it on the front of its membrane. And then along comes a T helper cell, T helper, and it will kind of bind to it in that presentation, and this will cause the T helper cell to become sensitized. So it's very similar to what we saw over here with the sensitization, but in this case, this was through a B cell and IgE. This is through a T helper cell, so this is a lymphocyte reaction. And then this will potentially just duplicate itself, and you'll have a whole lot of T helper cells that are primed to that particular antigen. In that case, it's a latex. So when that comes back in, the T helper cell can react quite quickly. So this latex binds to the T helper cells, which then will release cytokines, and that's, those cytokines will bring more macrophages in. So now macrophages come to that area where you have the exposure. And in this case, it's going to be in your hands, because that's where you're la using your latex gloves. And those macrophages will release chemicals that will then cause dermatitis, okay? And this will take 48 to 72 hours, so it's delayed, unlike this one, which is immediate, very quickly. Both of them will need sensitizing, but this reaction is when you have your secondary exposure, like pollen or peanuts or bee venom, very quick. This one's going to take 48 to 72 hours to respond, so it's delayed, okay? So, that's how that's different. This one doesn't use antibodies, this one uses lymphocytes. Okay, now, some examples is dermatitis, as I said. So, that can be contact dermatitis, such as latex. Another example is diabetes. Okay, so type 1 diabetes, and in this case, it would be your beta cells in your pancreas, which would have that reaction and kill them off, leading to type 1 diabetes. And because we're using dermatitis, diabetes, and delayed, we're going to have D, which gives us the mnemonic ACID. And so hopefully when you think ACID now, you can remember the four types of hypersensitivity. We've got the type 1, the type 2, type 3, type 4. Hopefully you can give an example of their mechanisms and how they're different, how the antigen and immune complex react slightly different, and a few examples for each.
And if you find it hard to remember, always go back to the mnemonic acid.